Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you. <clears throat> Excuse me, happy winning Wednesday. You made it to the middle of the week. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I pray you guys received sweet sleep on last night and woke up with bells and whistles on this morning. Hey there, Heartbeat Eva. G beautiful Wednesday morning to you as well. Hey there, Heartbeat Yolanda. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Nicole. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Rainy. Good morning, Heartbeat Lamont. Heartbeat Troy. Good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Aaliyah. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you guys. Welcome to the Gathering of Hearts this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer. Hey there, Heartbeat Pudding Pop. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation from yesterday. Forgive, forgive, forgive. And we're on part three today. And so, like I told you, we can talk about forgiveness all year long. It is something that we must do each and every day. It's like the renewal of the mind. It has to be done every single day. And so this morning, this week, we're going to continue on in forgiveness because forgiveness um unforgiveness i should say is what clogs up your heart unforgiveness is what ties up the hands of the holy one of israel and so we want to make sure that our hearts are clear that our hearts are pure and so you know like i did a series last year about allowing god to have um to do heart surgery on you that he may cleanse your heart of all of the things that are stopping you from walking into your wholeness, that he may cleanse you of all unforgiveness, all bitterness, all resentment, all that stuff that goes with it. And so um, today we're going to start talking about, because I've been talking about it and I've been reading um, your comments and you guys have been, I mean, good comments. Somebody said they were ready to be set free, forgive until I'm free. Um, I will switch my brain. I will renew my mind and heart, Lord. Forgiveness helps me heal after the pain. And so some good things. And so I am extremely proud of all of you that you are taking the steps that are needed to um, walk in forgiveness. So kudos to each and every one of you of Heartbeat Nation. I love you guys so much. And I love that you are taking the word of God that you're hearing each morning and you are applying it to your life. That is how you become a better person. And God is proud as well. And so for the, I remember um, last week, a person stated that um, God had shown them something and they didn't even realize that they were still operating in unforgiveness. And so this morning, I want to give you some tips or at least start out today, giving you some tips on um, how to recognize when you're operating in unforgiveness, because that is true. Sometimes we think that we have forgiven a person until something comes up. Not only is the person shocked, we're shocked too, because you're like, I thought I had gotten over that. So we're going to go over that. So listen, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. said this. He said, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a constant attitude. And so I love that. It just goes back to, you know, when Peter was asking Jesus, how many times must I forgive? And seven times seven. And God was like, no, 70 times seven, which means unlimited, that you cannot be an emotional bookkeeper when it comes to forgiveness. And so here, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says it too. He says, forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a constant attitude, which means this, this is who I am. This is what I do all the time. And I know just like in that account, he said, well, Lord, you're going to have to increase my faith because it takes faith to forgive. It takes faith to see yourself past where you are right now. It takes faith to see that, you know what, you hurt me, you did me wrong, but I'm going to love you anyway. It takes faith for that. But guess what? We all have it. We all have our own measure of faith. And then based on how you work it, you can either have strong faith, really strong faith, weak faith, whatever it is. But I'm declaring and decreeing on this morning that you have strong faith. And so one of the things um, 
uh, one of the one thing to recognize that you're operating in unforgiveness is burst of anger. If you have burst of anger and you know, you guys know that that was mine. That is how um, God wants me whole got started because I was having anger issues from something that stemmed back from when I was a child. But it was an emotion that had not been dealt with. And just like I grew up, so did that emotion. And so you've got to... Um, you know, get that in check. So anger, the person who receives it, the person who receives your anger is not the culprit or the source of your stress and your pain. That is why you got to deal with it because you're um, releasing an emotion on somebody that has nothing to do with what's going on you. What's the recourse? Be mindful of the emotion. Be mindful of the source. Remember to pause and pivot. We talked about that yesterday. You've got to pause and pivot. You got to turn. You cannot continue to walk in anger. Anger is, is it's just going to tear you apart. It's going to break you down and it's going to put you in a place that you don't want to be. And I told you mine started at eight and I didn't deal with it until I was 30, 31. And so look at all of those years that I walked around in dysfunction. Look at all those years where anger was controlling me. And so I'm saying to you, if anger is one of your things, then you've got to um, call out to God and Ask for his assistance. And I'm telling you, he will help you. I am a living witness that God will help you, that he will send people your way. Here I am to help you. Amen. And so you got to, here's the other thing. You got to learn to apologize. When you have these um, anger outbursts, you can't just keep walking around like that. It's not cute. You've got to learn to get it in check. And when you slip up, you've got to apologize immediately. This is how healing begins. Number two, having impulsive reactions. <laughs> this is a funny one. Um, you're petty when it comes to the person. You have uh, premeditated um, conversations with yourself. You know, like when I see them, I'm going to say this. They better not say this to me. You have snide remarks, um, much sarcasm. Um, you do all this and you're powerless. You've given the person so much control. And I know this hit home hits home with a lot of people because you know you have these premeditated conversations. And then when I tell people how about planning to say something good and they'll say, oh, I can't do that. And I'm like, yes, you can. Because how many times have you sat back and you've played the whole conversation out? I'm going to say this. And then when I say this, I know that they're going to say that. We got to stop that. Game over for that. We've got to deal with these emotions. But that is another trait that when you you are walking in unforgiveness. This is how you respond to that person. So how do I change it? Pause and pivot. Come to yourself. Stop playing the fool. I'm going to say that again. Stop playing the fool. Remember, I'm always saying stop being a character in somebody else's theatrical production. That is not who you are. And so you've got to make a decision that I'm going to get this anger under control. I'm going to get my emotions under control. And you know, it's it you got to think about this. Is your premeditated action going to improve things? <clears throat> or will it make will it is it going to improve things? Is it going to make you feel <clears throat> excuse me, better for the moment and then leave you in regret and despair. And that's what usually happens. You feel good for the moment. You know, when you tell somebody off for a quick second, you feel good at that moment. But then what happens? You feel bad about it. You talk to yourself. I should have never done that. So let's stop that on today. I'm giving you things to help you recognize when you're walking in unforgiveness. This is the behavior that you have towards the person who has offended you. Number three, desperation has taken over and you got to let them know how you feel. How many of us have been there when you're just so upset, you're so mad, you're so hurt, you want to tell them how you feel. You have a script. I'm going to say this and then they'll say that. So this is what I'm telling you. Cancel that. Just don't even think about that anymore because at that moment, you're not in your right mind and all you're going to do is say something that's going to make it worse and you're in desperation. You know how desperate people, you do crazy things. What is the recourse? Pause and pivot. Pause and pivot is going to be what you do all the time. So if you think of Pastor G, you said that already. Yeah, I did. 
pause and pivot. When we stop and think about it, when you pause, when you stop, you have an opportunity to think about how this thing is going to play out. This is when you allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you. This is when you hear the Holy Spirit and you listen. And so you, in most cases, the person may never take ownership of what they have done to you. I'm going to say it again because you've got to accept the fact that most people are not going to take ownership of what they have done, but you've got to accept it and begin the process of moving on. So I love this song by Jonathan McReynolds. And so I'm quoting him. He says, I know my rear view can't compare to what God will do in my life. I am forgetting what's behind me. I have finally decided I'll be moving on. And that's what you've got to do in this thing of unforgiveness. You've got to learn to forgive, forgive, forgive. You've got to move on in this thing. You cannot stay stuck where you are because you're missing out on what God will have for you. Remember, the Bible tells us forgive that you may be forgiven. And so you've got to make a conscientious um, a step. You've got to make a conscientious you know, you gotta, you gotta like stop and think like, listen, this isn't getting me anywhere. This is not what God has for me. And so I'm going to stop right here on today and we're going to pick this up tomorrow, but I'm going to give you some more tips to show you that you may recognize when you are walking in unforgiveness, that you may be able to re um, realize it, recognize it, ask God to assist you in this thing, that you may be able to walk into all the ways of God. Listen, and God has opened doors for you. God has already been moving on your behalf. And so you cannot, again, going back to last week, get to the palace with a, a pit mentality. Yes, it happened to you. Yes, it hurt. But you've got to learn how to forgive. Like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, it's something that you must do all the time. Forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a constant attitude. To. You've got to switch your brain and understand that I'm no longer this old person because God is doing a new thing, but I'm a person that forgives all the time. Can you understand how stress-free your life will be when you learn to forgive, forgive, forgive? Remember, when you operate in unforgiveness, you have released control to the offender. You have become their puppet and they are your puppet master because they are controlling your emotions. And the sad part is most of the time they have no idea that you are that offended. Remember that when you stay in a place of unforgiveness, it's you allowing that person to live in your head, to live in your heart rent free. You have allowed them to dictate how you operate each and every day. You have allowed that person to control you. You have relinquished the control that God has given you each and every day and you have given it to someone else. It's time to take control back. It's time to have that prodigal moment. Come to yourself and understand that you are a child of God and the way that you are operating now is not the characteristic of a child of God. That God has given us the ability to forgive. God has given us a word that tells us that we are to forgive and that if we are going to continue to walk in wholeness, we've got to forgive, forgive, forgive. Listen, that's your daily dosage for today. Forgive, forgive, forgive part three. We're going to pick this back up tomorrow. We're going to go over some more characteristics to help you recognize when you are walking in unforgiveness. Because what do we do here in Heartbeat Nation? We forgive, forgive, forgive. Listen, if you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you can find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website. God wants me whole. Org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say, God wants me whole and I am getting whole by the minute. I, excuse me, I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a whole bunch. In fact, hug yourself real tight. That's from me. I love you guys a whole bunch. Have a spec while amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. And I will see you in the morning. Love you guys a bunch.